Okay, so we spent a good few uh, minutes trying to make sure that we got this skeleton stage of the face done. Now, remember, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. There are elements of my drawing that I'm happy with. There are elements that I think I need to sort of work on a little bit more. So, for example, I feel that the jaw and the chin need to sort of come up a little bit. And I'm very conscious I want to keep that narrowness of the face. I don't really want to keep it uh, getting it wide as well. And I think the eyes are going to need just a little bit of work. Slightly bring them in a little bit just to make them fit in their head. But it's a good starting point. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to really focus on tone. Now, tone is that difference of light and dark. It's the shadow on the face. Now, it's very, very important at this stage to remind you we're not focusing on detail. Detail's going to come sort of towards the very, very end. You can get into a lot of problems by going into detail straight away. If you do that, what you're sort of saying yourself with your artwork and with your drawing is that it's right and it's perfect at this stage. Now, very, very rarely are you going to get it right at the early stages. So you want to refine it as it goes along. So keep blocking in and see it and look at uh, the areas of the face in planes of tone, large chunks of areas. And almost, again, try and see it, not so much curves, but see it in sort of straight lines. And we'll refine it and we'll curve it as we go ahead. Now, the way I'm going to build and start this up is I'm going to start off with the darkest tones first. So if you're doing this with an image at home, just look at your image and try and identify what's the darkest part of that image image. Now I say the word image, not face, because the darkest part of the image might actually be the clothing, or it could be the hair, it could be the skin cone, depending on the, uh, the nationality and the person that you're uh, drawing or painting. So really, really observe where that darkest tone is. It should be the blackest, darkest point of your image. Now for mine, for this image, there's quite a few areas that are incredibly dark. Uh, it's probably going to be the shadow uh, in the neck uh, under the collar. It's going to be the collar and under the collar itself. A little bit maybe on the right hand side and here and then going up to the face itself it's going to be uh, the eyes the pupils particularly and the shadow inside the ear those are my absolute darkest marks so i'm going to use my nice thick bit of charcoal and i'm going to start laying it flat and blocking that in first okay so nice big planes of expressive marks okay now you can be really fun with this you don't have to be accurate put some really nice marks because you want some of these really nice big bold marks to sort of remain in the later stage of the finished painting uh, finished drawing sorry you want a nice range of marks there's a nice sort of dark shadow here on the face i'm going to sort of build that in straight away this side of his face going down to the jaw not pushing quite as hard as i was on this side and then it's slightly dark up here on his hair going up here and there's a nice sort of dark shadow mark there okay so you're working really broadly and nice and thickly we'll come back to the eyes in a minute i might sort of swap to a smaller bit of my charcoal just to get the uh, the accuracy in there so i'm not obliterating it so i obviously want to get the shadow on the inside of his nose on that left hand side obviously under the nose as well that's going to give it that three-dimensional feeling of the nose really coming forward the top of his lip or the lips are quite dark the chin i'm going to think about sort of uh, pushing the chin up slightly higher as well so it's in the right uh, shade, uh, the right shape sorry and then I need to sort of look at the inside of this here a nice sort of mark there coming down here and you could be a bit fun with that you could just sort of make some really nice marks there and it just sort of makes the drawing look a bit more expressive and it kind of looks what you know what you're doing if you're putting these lovely kind of fun marks on it sort of comes across nice and confident and we want to create a nice confident uh, enjoyable uh, drawing to look at so we've got a nice little blocking there. We're really happy with that. Now you can do two things. You can sort of go blender. You can take your fingers and you can sort of knock that back. But you'll notice straight away, actually, that's taken the tone, tonal value away. I've actually made that slightly lighter by rubbing into it. Now you don't need to rub your fingers into it. If you want to be a very clean charcoal drawer, you don't need to rub into it any of it at all. However, if you do, you can build up layers. This is why charcoal is such a great, very painterly medium, like I like to call it. Because like paint, you can build up layer upon layer upon layer. It's not just one layer like other drawing mediums so um, if you are looking to find a medium that translates very easily into painting charcoal is a really really great example a uh, great medium for this so I could just put that in and if you really wanted to build up the layers of darkness so for example down here in his collar I'm just going to rub all that lovely dark pigment in and I'm going to put in another mark on top and that suddenly made that look at that so much darker than it was just a few seconds ago by rubbing that in and then pushing down another layer of, of the charcoal really making it nice and dark and I'm really pushing fairly hard now with that just to get to get the density and the intensity of that charcoal 
So again, looking up into the ear and here. I'm gonna now sort of just focus on the tone of the eyes. I'm gonna jump down to my uh, smaller, uh, sort of medium willow charcoal stick. And I'm again just gonna squint and just sort of look in the shape of the eyes and the area around the eyes, including the eyebrow. And I'm not putting a lot of pressure on this charcoal. I'm holding it, as you notice, at the very, very tip. If you hold the, if you hold the charcoal like you are holding a pencil, you're actually going to apply a lot of pressure on it and that's going to create a very dense mark. If you want to create a very light mark, hold the very, very tip of it and barely put any pressure on it and that's going to give you a much lighter approach and lighter feel of using that charcoal. And you'll be in a much more control of it as well. So start really looking. I'm really focusing at the mid-tones. I'm going to zoom in just so we can see that, just on this cheek here. Because I can see that this cheek on the left is much lighter than this cheek on the right. So I'm going to use the mid-tone of my paper, a lovely mid-tone range. It's going to help me get that lovely mid-tone. And I'm just going to bring the shadow just on that side of the cheek over a little bit. And I'm going to sort of strengthen the dark of this eye here, okay? So you've noticed those drawing lines, that skeleton drawing that we spent good time over, you can't really see it anymore. So it's another good example why this stage is really, really, it's a good method because all those drawing lines that you put in in the, in the uh, first part of this drawing, you're not going to see anyway. So if you have made a big mistake, you're going to completely cover it with all these lovely tones anyway. But by investing that time in that structure, we've given ourselves a strong structure that we know is going to work fairly, very well. So let's just get the shadow above the eye. Now I'm going to bring in the shadow of his nose in slightly darker. And I'm going to bring the shadow just on this side slightly darker as well. And I know the shape of that eye just needs to come a little bit more horizontal like that. And I'm just going to push in just now a little bit harder just to get the darkness inside the eye there. And then I know very, very quickly that's going to come down to about here. And that's going to create the darker shadow just around this nostril here. Now. There's one important tool that I've yet to bring out and use for this drawing and that's the eraser, a rubber. And it's an important tool and you will be probably using your rubber and eraser just as much as you'll be using your charcoal and at the later stages the white chalk. So this is a stage where I'm going to bring out an eraser. I've got this lovely kind of pencil, it's what I call a pencil rubber and just it gives you a very very fine point. So this eraser and I just noticed that I just need to sort of bring the shadow just under this nose just a little bit higher and I've noticed the shadow on his forehead. I've just crept it over a little bit too far to the right. So just by doing that I'm just going to take the shadow just back by about an inch or a couple of centimetres there to the left hand side. Now you could use a putty rubber, putty rubber is really really good for that, you could just use a normal uh, rubber and eraser, anything will do as long as it just takes back the worst of those marks. And because those charcoal marks are so light, you can move that back. If you wanted to correct an area that you've actually put a lot of dark charcoal and really applied a lot of pressure, it will be a lot harder to erase. So just be very, very careful. When you are applying the pressure of the charcoal, make sure you're really happy with it, otherwise it may be very difficult to correct at a later stage. So I was just now going to check the distance now from this mouth, uh, from the, sorry, the, the under part of his nose, going to his mouth. And I think I'm just going to raise it up just a fraction, just a fraction. So I think that's, a, that's a, about a couple of inch, uh, a couple of little uh, millimetres, sorry, slightly higher. And then going up to the top part of his mouth there. So it's almost as if the line that I placed originally, which I thought was the middle of his line, has now actually become his bottom lip. You notice there, so that's now actually he's become his bottom lip. So I don't have to actually, I don't have to rub that out, I'm just incorporating it into what I think is uh, the correct layout. I'm going to take away this little shadow mark here, and I'm going to put that up slightly higher, which I think is roughly there. And notice I'm still using the word roughly and think. This is all still very, very general. It's not about getting it right first time. We'll kind of go into the regions of detail and being really specific over the next couple of stages. Just straighten up that mouth a little bit. So we're sort of getting a bit closer step by step. You can sort of see those features coming through. And have you noticed how by just putting just a very, very simple amount 
of tone by blocking in very broadly and then slightly refining it with this charcoal stick. You're getting something that looks three-dimensional. We're trying to create this optical illusion. We're using a two-dimensional piece of paper. We've just got a piece of uh, a simple charcoal and we're trying to make something that is two-dimensional look three-dimensional, which is a very, very hard thing to try and do. It'd be a lot easier to do this with a lump of clay because at least you've got three dimensions on your side. You can sculpt it three-dimensionally. We haven't got that, so by blocking in very, very quickly, you can see that we're starting to get the feel of something that's no longer flat, but something that's starting to feel a little three-dimensional and lifelike. So I'm fairly happy with the shadow on the left-hand side of the face. I'm now just going to check the, uh, the distance from the mouth and the jaw, and I was a bit concerned that it was a bit too long. So I'm just going to spend just a few seconds just checking if I need to do anything with it and if I need to move it about. So I'm now going to check the uh, placement of the mouth. So I'm now going to get my pencil and I want to make sure that it's long enough because I think it needs to creep over to the left hand side a little bit. So by holding out my pencil, I'm going to sort of check the, where the mouth features in relation to the rest of the head. So by holding out my pencil, I can see that the mouth runs pretty much parallel under this pupil on the left hand side. So on the drawing, if I was to do a line down there, I know my actual end of my mouth needs to sort of come there. So it needs to creep over by about a centimetre. So I'm going to move that mouth over to the left hand side a little bit because that's how it appears on the image. So we've just given him a bit more of a broader smile now. So consequently I need to move the shadow on his face just a little bit over here and the highlight just around his mouth there. Now consequently I just need to check if that nose end is in the right place. I think that nose is fine. I think that eye might come in and I think the shadow might come out a little bit more. I'm fairly happy with that, where that's placed. I'm coming down with a shadow on the inside there and his upper lip will come over just a fraction there. Marvellous. So let's go now check the distance from this mouth now down to where the chin is. I want to make sure that I get that distance really, really correct. So I think the bottom part of his chin here. Now the actual bottom part actually completely blends in to the shadow under his jaw. So I've got to kind of get that illusion that it just completely melts away. And we only really find an edge just where this highlight is there, just under his chin. That's the only line, the only defined edge that we can see. So you really must make sure that you're drawing and painting what you see and not what you really think is there, which is a common trait. And that's where we always fall into problems. We get lazy. We're actually we're just sort of getting into lazy habits by drawing and painting what you think, not what you actually see. So there's a little crease just under his mouth there. Just use my rubber just to clean that up there. And that distance down from the chin, I think that feels about right. And then just get the shape of the charcoal under there. And that in turn can lead me to the edge of his mouth and give his jaw just a little bit more strength, a bit more angled. So I know the shadow under his neck comes down fairly quickly and then it stops quite abruptly and there's a little bit of half tone here and then it goes straight into this lovely pure white which I'll just clean up under here. Let's just check where his neck line is and the neck on the right hand side falls just on the inside of this eye so if I run down the neck comes in there so I'm just going to shadow that area there and that's where his neck comes in. And that's where the line of his t-shirt comes down. And then with your eraser as well, you could just clean up all this bit because all that's going to be highlighted a little bit later on. So I'm a bit happier now with the structure of that chin. When we get into a little bit more detail later, I can refine it just a little bit further. The one part of the thing we've neglected, we're just sort of going to go up uh, to, from this nose. We're going to go up to the... Uh, top of the nose here, which I'm fairly happy with. I'm just going to spend just a little bit of time just making sure that the placement of this eye is correct and the tonal value is right. So of course the pupil in the middle is quite dark and again I'm not looking at detail here, just seeing it as just these areas of tone. I'm looking at it with squinted eyes. We're going to get into the realms of doing detail a little bit later. I'm just really happy. Now you've got to make sure that does that eye fit on that angle. Remember earlier where we did that eye axis? Do those eyes fit in? We don't want it straight, we want it on that slight angle. Now mine's crept slightly down, so I'm going to push this eye just a little bit higher where it should be 
so it's constantly changing and constantly correcting so just taking just a little bit of shadow away from under the eye that's just naturally made it appear just a little bit higher up as it should be where that eye axis was where we originally placed it which I was fairly happy with. He's got very, very faint eyebrow up here, which we don't need to put in. I'm just going to take away what, the lines that are left there, which I don't need them. They've done their job. Just take a little step back. And do check as well, another common problem we fall through is the distance between the eyes. So that gap in the middle between here and here. Now, typically and traditionally, we're taught that the distance or the width of one of those eyes is the same as the gap in the middle. So the width of this eye is about that width, which should be the same for the gap in the middle. Now, that is a general rule. It does change for some people, but it's a good general rule to sort of stick with to check, okay? If you find that there's quite a far distance or the eyes are way too close together, you are going to compromise your likeness. So do spend a little bit of time of just checking that. Now I'm just going to then look at the outside of his face and clean up just some of the edges here that I don't need anymore. And go in just a little bit there. And then it comes out just a little bit for his eyebrow. There's a slight out curve here. And then suddenly we get into the territory of, of sketching in some lovely hair. So that's the one thing I've neglected now. I've not redone really much for the hair, but I'm not too worried about that because I don't want your focus and attention to be on the hair. The focus and attention should be on the eyes and those nose and mouth. The hair is a real supporting character. So you just with a few lines, you can sort of just suggest as and what you need to put in. So I'm fairly happy with that. That's a fairly blocked in stage. Now you might want to consider that a finished drawing and some people do. It has a nice sort of raw quality to it, which is lovely. Parts of it are refined. You can very, very see there is a likeness there. You've got a rough structure. You can tell it's a head. But what I'm going to do in the next stage is I'm going to show you how, just by refining just a few of those key facial features, how you can really transform this portrait into something that you're really happy with.